Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today Firefox starts rolling out DNS over HTTPS or don't. We're going to talk about that today. Welcome back to Switch to Linux. If you've not already subscribed to the channel, definitely subscribe down there. Like the video if you like it. Dislike it if you disliked it, that's all cool. Leave me some comments. This is kind of a slight dissenting opinion and one that I put a little bit of thought into when we first started talking about DNS over HTTPS that started kind of uh, hitting the news cycles around October or so. And uh, as of today when I'm filming this, Firefox is now starting to roll this out. Now, I am running Arch back over here. I did run all my updates. It did not switch me over. So if you have an existing Firefox, it appears as though your settings are not going to change. So my guess is if you, uh, if you reinstall Firefox or if you install it for the first time, it now defaults in the United States to HTTPS over DNS by default and then sets Cloudflare as your DNS provider. Now there's only two options. We have Cloudflare and we have Next DNS. I have a couple concerns about this issues. But first let's go ahead and talk about the positives. Now, some people are saying this prevents your ISP from seeing what you're doing. No, it doesn't. It doesn't at all. It prevents the ISP, and this is your pro, it prevents your ISP from tinkering with your DNS settings. So one of the things uh, ISPs used to do is they would inject something into your DNS settings in order to make sure that, you know, they wanted to make sure that uh, something like their advertising system pushed down and you got annoying pop-ups. That's something that, uh, that was kind of put an end to, but it's something that, that could, uh, could be there. Now, D, um, DO, we'll call it DOH or DO. Um, DOH can be good if it is highly controllable on a network wide implementation. I think it's always a bad idea the way Firefox and Chromium are trying to implement it. And I'm going to kind of explain why. Now again, the pro, it does prevent tampering with DNS requests. And while you, your ISP may not be able to see the exact website you're going to, most of your large services, they really only have one website per ISP okay, or per IP address. So they can still see the IP address, but frankly, they can still see the same stuff that an HTTPS will actually, uh, will actually mask. They can see you're there, they can see you're transmitting data, they can see how, the, how much data, but they can't actually see what you're actually doing on that server. And so the pros, it's not about privacy. The pro is it prevents DNS tampering. But wrapped in that pro is the very con I'm gonna talk about, and there are too many cons. I have four listed here, and I'm sure that there are more. There might even be more pros, but I spent quite a bit of time thinking about this, and I don't see a whole lot of other reasons. Now, the first con, this is going to bypass any of your network settings, anything you're doing. So for example, on my local network here, you cannot access any of those adult sites that I talked about in my library video. You cannot access session replay type scripts, um, Bitcoin miner type scripts, any malicious advertising campaigns, and I am the one in control of this. It's not like Adblocker Plus. We'll block your stuff unless you pay us some money, then we'll unblock your stuff. Well, interesting. Cloudflare doesn't block pretty much anything. So by default, all of that stuff is going to go through. And no matter what, the changes in your DNS are exclusively at the whim of Cloudflare. And remember that Cloudflare is the company that their CEO woke up one day and said, I didn't really want that controversial website on my server, so I just decided today to terminate it for no real reason. Did we forget that, people? I don't trust Cloudflare. They also tinker around with Tor browser. So if you're trying to use Tor, it may actually interfere with that. That's actually some of the contributing factors why I stopped using Cloudflare's 1.1.1.1. Okay, um, I'm not about to say it's horribly bad. I'm not about to say it's amazing. The other, only other option you have is NextDNS which is a very new company. They seem to have a pretty good, uh, a pretty good, uh, 
privacy policy and things of a ton front, but I went over and looked at their website, which I believe it's nextdns.io. There is a nextdns.com, which seems to be completely uh, unrelated and does not even have an HTTPS. Uh, no SSL. Hmm, interesting. But if you go on over to uh, nextdns.io, you can see there, it's like you, you sign up. You don't even cre need to create an account right now. And it's talking about, oh, it's free to use during beta. After that, it's going to cost $1.99 a month. Hmm. These are our options. Okay, that's a little bit of a concern that I have. Um, it also, though, will prevent any local blocking. So this has a few factors. Number one, for my web design work, I oftentimes spin up development servers on alternate IPs and then change the host file on the computer to point to that new server so I can build a website and test a website without impacting the other website. Okay, but I also have that big custom host file script, which is on the privacy page at switchtolinux.com, where you can use this and deploy it on your machine, and it will block the session replay, the advertising networks, the bad adult sites, all that kind of stuff is all blocked. HTTPS over DNS bypasses that. I cannot put on my local network, the ability for my children to not see those sites, and then you install Firefox, by default, it gets around that network blocking, and now my kids can get on shady websites that I don't want them on. And now, I can't even have Firefox installed on their computer because they know how to just go ahead and turn it on. Mm, interesting. So, local and network-wide issues are circumvented by this protocol. Now, this does prevent any custom LAN networking. Now, in Enterprise Editions, Firefox will allegedly figure out, you know, sense that you're doing this and not enable itself. Uh, I'd like a little bit more information on that. First and foremost, I don't have a full Enterprise network here, but my network here is still very comprehensive. I do not need a web browser loading up and bypassing all of my network stuff. So now this is one more thing I'm gonna to have to do when I install Firefox and down the road, Chrome and Chromium as well. I mean, I don't install Chrome, but uh, Chromium I'm sure is going to enable this as well, especially since Firefox took the plunge. It's only a matter of time before that shows up. So any bypassing on your local or network, uh, your local network or even your host computer is bypassed. Anything that you do to do your uh, your local networking stuff. How about the third option? This is always neat. We always want a more diverse playing field. Now we're limited to two DNS providers. Hmm. We are narrowing the field down, one to a seemingly brand new company that is still in beta, and the other a company that has decided once on a whim to simply block somebody's services because they didn't like what they were doing. Interesting. Now, the fourth is a future idea, not something related to Firefox doing DOH, but with other protocols. What happens when this protocol is becoming normalized and your embedded devices start doing this protocol inside of their own local DNS? You have now lost all control of that IoT device. You cannot even control it now on a network level, which means if Nest or if Alexa order me unicorn meat confirm, or if your Hey Google, all of these smart devices start implementing this technology by default, you will lose the ability to control what it is doing on your local level area. These are fundamental concerns that we have to have about DOH before we start pushing it all out to the world. Unfortunately, it's kind of like, it's kind of like the cat's out of the bag. Now we have to chase it around. If you've ever had a cat in a bag and let the cat out of the bag and try to get the cat back into the bag, it doesn't go back into the bag very easily. And that's kind of the problem. And I was thinking about having, uh, having a demonstration of this with a cat in a bag, but I put the cat in the bag to try and I can't get the cat back in the bag. So the cat's running away from me today. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. That did not really happen. I did not put my cat in a bag. <laughs> All right. But I'm sure that if I tried, it would not be a favorable thing. The cat would not enjoy it. Okay, so these are my basic concerns. So let's look at a very brief summary. Number one, 
any local, direct on your computer, or network-wide changes or filtering you're trying to do will not work. And by the way, I am working on a video for Pi-hole, putting it on your network to block all this kind of stuff if you're not running a big router uh, based on PFSense like I'm running. I wanna show you how to do that with a Raspberry Pi on your local network. Sorry, Firefox will just bypass that now. So if you wanted to put up good filters for your family, you can't do it anymore. <laughs> Done. So that means well, to not open up the wounds of the library video again, Okay, if I want to, as a conscientious adult, block certain content from my home network, I have lost the ability to do that. And that is always a bad thing. I'm not telling you don't produce that stuff. I'm telling you I want an option to keep it out of my house and Firefox is removing that option. But the technology is already out of the bag. So we don't have a lot of choice. Number two, it's going to prevent any networking or LAN stuff. Uh, from actually functioning. Third, it's going to narrow our field for DNS servers. And number four is it's going to set a very, very dangerous precedent on the already dangerous IoT scene. And it's going to allow us to lose all control of these devices once they are on a network. These are fundamental concerns that I have with the DOH protocol. And I would encourage you, turn it off, do not use it. And overall, I would say, let's stick with what we got because it may not be perfect, but at least we still have control over it. Those are my thoughts on DOH. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below.